Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about fundamentals of internet and in this video, we're gonna talk about fundamentals of Linux. From the perspective of context-based learning, we're gonna surround our learning Linux on practical needs. We are not going to just learn a bunch of random commands. Instead of, we're gonna have a purpose for each and everything that we learn. So we are going to set a goal for that. To learn the basics of Linux, this is our goal. Set up a simple website on a Linux server. In order to get our website up, we need a bunch of things, right? First of all, we'll need a Linux server. So we're gonna learn virtualization and uh, some fundamentals of Linux in there itself. And then, once we have the server up and running, we need to be able to access it. So for that, we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn SSH and then to move around the system, we're gonna learn the navigation commands like CD, LS and we're gonna learn file system structure and things like that. Then to be able to create and modify files, we're gonna learn uh, MKDAR echo. I mean, don't worry about any of these commands. I'm just giving you an idea of like you know, what we are planning to do in this video. For our web server to run, we need a user. For that, we're gonna learn about user management and permissions. So to install the web server, we need to be able to install a package. For that, we're gonna learn about package management, you know, installing and removing packages, etc. And then to start our web server, we're gonna learn how to manage our services to start, stop, and enable or disable services. And then, going a bit further to actually make sure that our website works or if our web server is running fine we're gonna learn about process management and then we're gonna learn about some of those commands like curl or netstat to see if our website is up and running or if the port is open and things like that after that we are going to learn how to configure nginx which is a web server which i will explain in this video itself then we're gonna talk a bit about virtual hosts, HTTP headers and stuff like that. Also, we're gonna talk about checking log files. We're gonna talk about checking the log files to see if everything is working. Then we're gonna talk about some of the other uh, widely used commands like find, df, etc. We'll wrap it up with basic bash scripting. So, you know, we're gonna learn about the basics of the bash scripting and uh, then some other commands like, you know, set, awk. To make things fit together, we're gonna create a basic script. We're gonna create a simple script to back up our website and uh, we're gonna create another script to alert if our website is down. This is just to give an idea of why we use scripting or why we use programming language itself. So before we actually start with Linux, I want to take a moment to talk about virtualization. We're going to be doing everything in a virtual machine. Okay, virtualization allows us to create virtual machines. Basically, we can easily create, modify or destroy any operating system in our host machine. Host machine means like in this case, for example, I am running Windows 10 and I can have any operating system like Ubuntu or CentOS or even another Windows 10 itself running as a guest operating system. In our use case, we are using this operating system or these guest operating systems to learn stuff. But for more practical users, for example, in case of a data center, they have physical machines running there and almost all the servers that are actually being used will be virtual machines. There might be like a 64 CPU machine with 128 gigabytes of RAM. But instead of just using that machine as is, there will be a lot of smaller virtual machines running inside that for different purposes. I don't want to spend too much time talking about virtual machines. Let's just get started. Before we talk about Linux, we should talk about Unix. In the 70s, a bunch of really smart people, including Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, created this operating system called Unix. This was a really popular operating system and this was not open source. This was a proprietary operating system. Through the 80s and 90s, there were a bunch more Unix family operating systems like uh, IBM's AIX, 
Sun Solaris, BSD, etc. So BSD is what macOS is based on. So that's why we say macOS is also a Unix based operating system. All of these Unix operating systems are based on this philosophy called Unix philosophy. The Unix philosophy says like write programs that do one thing and do it well. Write programs to work together. Write programs to handle text streams because that is a universal interface. So all of these Unix operating systems are based on these principles. These principles are actually even in use at this day and age. In the 90s, Richard Stallman was looking to build a truly open source operating system as an alternative to Unix. As I said before, Unix was not open source. It was, it is a proprietary operating system. So he had a bunch of tools and programs and uh, he kind of had an operating system. He called it GNU. GNU stands for GNU is not Unix. Even though GNU had a kernel, it was not perfect. So. That's where Linux Torvalds came into picture. He created this kernel he called Linux and the two combined these to form GNU Linux or that was the birth of modern Linux operating system. Now there is a naming controversy about GNU or Linux. When we talk, we usually say Linux. Linux is actually the kernel. GNU Linux is the whole package or the whole operating system. Because of that, there is still a controversy among the community members whether GNU Linux or Linux is the right term. The difference between Linux and Unix is mostly on the licensing. If we move aside the licensing part, there are more similarities than differences. Linux still follows the Unix philosophy. Almost all the tools that follow the POSIX standard will work on any system. For example, the scripts or tools that are written for any Unix operating system should work on a Linux operating system without much modification to the script. So as I said before, macOS is also a Unix based operating system which is actually based on BSD and this is one of the reasons a lot of developers actually prefer Mac OS over Windows because the command line experience is pretty much same as in Linux. You can actually use almost all the Linux tools in macOS also using something called Homebrew. So in the beginning, the Linux kernel and the GNU tools were released as a floppy image and installing them was really complicated. Because of this reason, some folks came up with this idea of Linux distributions. So what they did was that they created something that made installation so much easier for people. Slackware and Debian are one of the very old a Linux distribution that are still being used. So that's about the history and you know, all the uh, boring stuff. Let's just get started. Going back to our mini roadmap, what we need to do is we're gonna install Linux on VirtualBox. Okay, let's do that. First of all, we need to download something called VirtualBox. So you go to virtualbox.org, download the package that corresponds to your operating system. Now I have already downloaded that. Now that we have installed VirtualBox, Let's go ahead and install Debian server. I'm choosing Debian because I think this will be the best distro to get started and uh, learn from. You can choose Ubuntu if you want, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use Debian 10. The first thing what we need to do is we need to download Debian 10. Actually, just go to Google and search for Debian download. Here you can see the network install option, click on it and you can actually download the AMD64 version of the CD. Now I have already downloaded the ISO, so I'm not going to download it again. So once that's downloaded, let's go ahead and create the virtual machine. I click on new and I'm going to name it Debian server. The type is Linux and the version is Debian. Just click continue. Oh, click next a ram of one gigabyte is more than enough click next again next vdi is fine just next dynamically allocated is fine next now here by default it says eight gigabyte but for some reason it does not work with eight gigabyte i had to give something like 12 gigabytes so that the installer is able to finish the installation so when I just left it at 8 GB, the installer crashed saying that there are some corrupt packages. Let's just give 12 GB and create. Now click start. Here click on this icon that will give an option to add the optical disk medium. 
just click on add and just uh you know browse to where how you download the debian iso and click click on the iso file now click on choose and choose the debian 10 iso file and click on start we're just gonna use the graphical installation option for that just press enter choose english choose your country i'm just gonna leave it at united states i'm just gonna use the default keyboard layout So for the host name, I'm just going to leave it at Debian and I'm just going to leave the domain name empty. Don't worry about it. Now we'll get to it like some sometime in future. So now it's asking to create the root password. This is the administrator password. For this case, since this is like a virtual machine that we're using for learning, I'm just going to use a simple password, but make sure to use a strong password if you're actually using it in production. Now it's asking to create a non root user. I'm just going to create a user for my name. And uh, it's asking to enter a password. So choose whatever the time zone that you want to choose. Because this is a virtual machine, we can use the entire disk. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click continue. All files in one partition is fine for now continue write the changes to disk click on yes and press continue the installation is going to take a few minutes now it's asking if you want to scan another cd or dvd you don't want to do that just click continue so here now it's asking to choose a mirror that's actually close to you but I have found that usually the closest mirror is not the best. I just leave it at the United States and it usually is kind of okay for me. And the default one is fine. Just click continue. I'm not going to use any proxy here. Just click continue. You can just click continue here as well. So now it's asking if we want to install any desktop environment. Because this is a server, we don't want any desktop environment. Just uncheck this option. We don't want any print server either, just uncheck that. But we need an SSH server. Now we're gonna talk about SSH really soon. For now, just click here and press continue. So now the installer is asking if we want to install the bootloader. Yes, of course we do. Just click continue. So here, just choose the dev SDA here and press continue. Okay, so the installation is done. All right, so our virtual machine installation is done. We can log in using the username and password that we have created previously. So I'm gonna use the username Mansoor and the password. So we have logged into the server. 